Hi there guys, welcome back in the shop, or in this case, outside. I wanted to take a minute and impart a bit of what I believed was fundamental man knowledge, but now this has turned into more of a question the more people I've talked to about it. I've spent most of my adult life loaning tools out to people, it was kind of my job, and it's a really rare experience for me to have to borrow a tool. As a rule, if I need a tool, I go and buy the tool. You can't have too many. A couple days ago, I had to borrow a uh, trash pump from my buddy Mitch in order to clean out the bilge on the boat as we're doing that. And I had a conversation with some of the people I was working with as, as we were packing up for the day. When you borrow a tool from somebody, my personal opinion and what should damn well be manly man law is that if you borrow a tool, you give it back in better condition than you got it. Like, clean it up, wipe it down, make it nice, maybe even do some minor repairs if it needs it. Any major repairs, that's the guy you're borrowing it from, of course. But the people I was with was just like, oh no, just roll it up and we'll toss it in the car, I'll take it out. No! <laughs> if you borrow a tool from somebody, you give that back to them super clean, really nice, fuel tanks full, just the whole nine, do it right. You didn't have to pay, in this case, several hundred bucks to buy the tool. You can spend 15 minutes and maybe five bucks to clean it up nice and send it back right. You do that and you're never gonna have any trouble borrowing tools from the guy ever again, that's, that's for sure. If you borrow a tool, have you not been taught that when you give it back, you give it back perfect, you don't just give it back, you give it back nice. That's basic respect. That's, that's respect for your workmanship, your craftsmanship, and respect for your friend and their property. This is fundamental stuff, guys. So I'm asking you, what's your opinion on this and why? Has anybody ever bothered to teach you this? Because if not, I got a lot more videos to make. And the first one we're gonna do is well, let's get this cleaned up and see how good we can give it back because this is a good pump, it's nice, but it could be better. Let's just take a minute and clean it up and see how much actual work it takes to return this in a really nice condition. The first thing I gotta do is flush out those hoses and wipe all the schmoo off them because I'm not gonna give them back dirty. Also, an important thing to note as we're going along here, if you borrow anything with hoses, especially the flat pack type, Make sure to lay them out in the sun, flush them out really good, and then let them dry in the sun before you roll them up. Because if you just put them away wet, like a horse, they'll smell pretty bad after a few days. So give them time to dry out and take good care of them, then roll them up for storage and you can give them back to your buddy. Are we shooting a video? Are we back in the shop? We're not really back in the shop yet. We're not even really in production yet. But, SAG rules. Everybody gets a cookie. All right, you've had your daily rate. I gotta go to work now. Okay, thank you guys. You're good dogs, yes. All right, so let's see just how bad this is. Let's just, like there's schmoo on the cord, there's schmoo on everything. So we're gonna just take a minute, and clean the shit off of this, so that when we give it back to him, it's nice. He might not even notice it, and if he doesn't notice it, that's fine. The important part is, I'll sleep better at night and know that I did the right thing. And that's, that's how we do. All right, so it's covered in shit, which is fitting, it's a shit pump. But we just grab a thing of Simple Green and some paper towels and that's, that's all you need here. The pump's in great repair, it's, it's not terribly old. It's a nice one. I totally know where he bought it. This is, this is a Menards pump. You just take a minute. Now he uses this to pump water out of his yard and basement. This is the, oh shit, we're flooding pump. So if you're cleaning a buddy's tool, you wanna make sure not to use anything like I wouldn't use acetone on the pipe because it'll screw up the pipe and you don't wanna, don't mess up your buddy's tool. That's an important thing to know though. If you borrow a tool from anybody and you break it, two things happen automatically, okay? One, you go buy a new one. 
You go buy a new one before you even tell your buddy you broke the old one. Okay, you go buy a new one, and you don't buy like shitty Harbor Freight version of the new one, you go buy a nice one. You go buy the one that you would buy for you. And two, you tell your buddy, after, like you bring it back, you give him a shiny new one, and he's like, what the hell, bud? And you're like, well, the old one kind of exploded when I tried to pump 200 gallons of gasoline through your macerator sewage pump. All right, so we got, we're gonna, we're, pipe's decent. It's not perfect, you don't have to get it perfect, just wipe the shit off it. And I know it's cleaner now than when I got it. And that's, that's all I'm going for. Doesn't have to be perfect and immaculate, just has to be better than when you bought it, or borrowed it in this case. See, this isn't, this isn't hard, this isn't rocket science. You just wipe the shit off it. Ew, he's got a wasp nest in here. There's, there's a wasp nest in this side of the pump. Thankfully, it's unoccupied at the moment. We're gonna have to blow that out. Yeah. Okay, there's the main body of the pump. Do the pressure switch real quick here. Or float switch, that's a float switch, not a pressure switch. Well, see we got Got some schmoo. So you want to make sure you don't have any, in my case, loose bits of rusty metal, coal tar, God knows what else is in the bottom of the bilge of a boat. All right, so we can see here the cords are really gungy. Now, my schmoo is the black schmoo. Pre-existing schmoo is the brown schmoo, which I'm just gonna keep telling myself is mud. It's just mud. It's totally mud. It's not a sewage pump. It's not, it's not a sewage pump. It's just mud. What was, what was the thing in that video? It's, it's just smells. So this pump has two cords, and some of you might be asking why, and the reason is one of the cords is actually a switch. See how this has a plug on it with a female side? This plug it goes to the float switch, so if you want the pump to just run all the time, you just plug it in here and the pump's just on. If you want the float switch to turn the pump on and off, then you take this plug and it goes in series right here and then you plug the whole thing in and then when the float comes up, it pushes this up here and the pump turns on when the water level goes back down, goes back down. And if you put this inside a five gallon bucket like I did, that'll cycle from on to off in like three seconds. It's kind of cool. All right, I just did that one. Now we're gonna Fold this around so we have a clean surface to work with. And grab right here. See, look at that, look at that, all that. You don't wanna give that to your friend.
And it's just, it's just simple green. I'm not using alcohol or acetone or anything. This one's still got a little bit of schmoo. We can do better. Don't use harsh chemicals or anything that might damage stuff. Because I'd feel pretty bad if I gave this back and the cord was melted to hell. That's, that's some powerful schmoo. It's just mud. It's just mud. Let's all just hold tight to that belief. It's just mud. It's not, it's not poo. It's not sewage. He, he didn't have a pipe back up in his basement or anything. It's just mud. Oh, that's way better. Yeah, that's, that's cool. All right, so the only thing left is the very bottom. There isn't much I can do about that rust. Like, I'm gonna clean it, but I'm not gonna paint it. So let's, uh, yeah, that's a cast iron base with a little bit of surface rust. And it's painted, so I can't go at it with a wire brush or I'd, I'd actually would have to repaint it. But let's just wipe it down and see if we can make it a little better. Because now we're down in the, the parts that actually sit in water. Now we got bit off. See, if I go at this with anything more abrasive than this, I'll scratch the paint. And if I scratch the paint, then it'll really rust, because cast iron likes to rust. And then if I make it, if I make the bottom of this pump all rusty, well then I gotta clean it and season it, and there's like a whole process in the oven, and it takes an afternoon. And that's a whole thing. I, I'm not interested in that. All right, so there you have it. It's cleaned up, it's decent, it's not pristine, it's not perfect, but it doesn't have to be. It's just better. And it's a hell of a lot better than giving it back to him with it all gunged up with schmoo, because that's just, that's not polite. So, there's my quick little video here on cleaning a pump and the important reasons why. And I really, I wanna know, did. Is this something somebody bothered to teach you at some point in your life? Because I don't think this is a radical concept. I think this is common sense. But man, when I told this to a couple people the other day, you'd have thought fire was shooting out of my head or something. They were like, what is this? I mean, you borrow a tool, you clean it before you give it back. So that's my take on it. If you borrow a tool, give it back right. You guys have fun. Thanks for watching. I'm Chris Bowden, and as always, I'll see you next time.